Hello, everyone. Uh, if you've met me before in the past, hello again. If you've not, um, not the robot, the person in the suit, that's myself, Simon. I've been around in the disability market now, healthcare market, uh, for about 20 years, starting off first with learning my way with basic wheelchairs out of a little shop that I ran, selling wheelchairs, scooters, rather client chairs, beds. Uh, then moved into the manufacturing side, worked for a company called ASM Medicare, uh, where we were manufacturing the purchasing stools, commode chairs, but also we had a, quite an elite range of bathing products back then called the multi-system and the shower cradles. So that got me into bathing and showering, um, which I really found fascinating with the positioning side. So that led me to specialist seating, curtain, curve flex, that type of equipment. Um, but the bathing and showering side bizarrely took me to Gebrit, of which I joined seven years ago. So I could bring my expertise of shower chairs and equipment that I'd sold myself personally over shower toilets uh, and brought it into Gebrit and then expanded on Gebrit and what was possible with a Gebrit shower toilet. Um, just so you do know, i cover this off so I don't forget, but if any of you are wondering about how we're doing assessments at the moment, we are still able to do home assessments as long as the occupational therapist or technical officers deem it fit to do so and the family are happy to do so. So we've been sending out a couple of emails, uh, the three steps to show a toilet heaven, as we called it. And basically it's three different options of assessment. So we are still doing in the home assessments, uh, turning up alongside yourselves, bringing the toilet to show the family, measuring the bathroom, and arranging the quotes. Obviously we have a lot of people who are still shielding. So option two is that we have a, a full 25 minute demonstration video on YouTube, which basically is me in my living room doing a demonstration of a toilet as if I was in the client's living room. So they can watch that and then through WhatsApp, social media, uh, email, they send pictures of the bathroom and with a discussion with yourselves, we can talk about seat heights, et cetera. And we can still get the quote raised. The family have still seen the toilet in full detail. Um, and option three is a little bit of a mix of option one and two. We've had quite a lot of people saying, I don't mind you coming in my house, but I don't want you in for a long time. So kind of option three is a family will watch the YouTube in advance. We can turn up on the day, literally just go into the bathroom, do our measuring up, check any any specifics and if a family have got any questions from watching the youtube video we've been shouting them down the hallway or as what happened on monday was i stood back on the drive and we opened the living room window and shouted the questions through the window so we can still do the process but we're just doing it to what whatever suits yourselves or whatever suits a family uh, and just so you do know if you do ask any of us to do any home assessments we turn up wearing gloves, masks, if we think we're gonna get really up close and we've got disposable aprons, visors. Um, for what it's worth, we antibacterial wipe the toilet before and after each visit. Uh, and the visit I had on Monday, they actually asked me if I'd squirt myself with antibacterial spray before I walked in the house, so I did. It, it's whatever makes someone comfortable and happy, isn't it? So, um, so this one today, I didn't really wanna talk about the toilet itself in too much detail, it was more about the, the common things that we come across with toilets that may have been installed already in the past, um, toilets that were installing and, and just an odd comment during the demonstration, but, but may step back and say, okay, well, if that's a situation, we need to look at something else. So this about future proofing a shower toilet pretty much applies to any shower toilet. And in some cases, even to a normal toilet, when you're looking at other equipment, going with the toilet. So for example, a tilting space shower chair or a self-propelled type shower chair. Um, there's so many different shower chairs out there. For this particular reason, the photographs you're gonna to see today are probably the most common two between Osprey Healthcare uh, and Prison Medical known as Freeway. Um, and I'm gonna try and give you an idea of why I look at very specific seat types, specific positioning of a toilet, the, the biggest challenge in any bathroom, which is soil pipe configurations and the challenges it presents. And then at the end, I do have a couple of pictures on equipment compatibility uh, and a project I've been working on for about six years with all the different show chair manufacturers. I'll give you a quick look at that as well. Um, and just if you are familiar, maybe not familiar with Gebrit, whilst we have across the world, we're one of the leaders in show toilets. We've been manufacturing them oh, oh, since the early 80s, the early 70s, sorry. Um, and we sell these globally across the world. But in the UK, for the healthcare market, we specifically focus on our floor-mounted, what we call the AquaClean Mira Kerr toilet. 
So this is one that you may have seen before. We've already been out doing demonstrations with. Uh, you'll understand by the time we get to the end of this presentation why we don't focus on these wall-mounted type toilets. There's just not enough projection from it to help out with what we need. So this is a toilet I'm going to be focusing on today. This is the toilet that we try to advise everyone to use in the healthcare world, in the disability world, especially if we're looking at specific seat heights, um, looking at shower chairs and equipment being used with it. Um, so this one is, as I say, it's going to touch mainly on future proofing the toilet when it's been installed, whether there's a shower chair or equipment being used with it straight away or even in the future. Uh, throughout the years, we've had phone calls from people. We've installed a toilet. It's six months down the line and we've come to put a, a shower chair over and it won't go over. And when you go out there, you can see the reasons why. So this is to kind of highlight them I and just not to scare anyone because every situation is fixable. But it's to give you an idea of what to look for, the reasons why we're in the bathroom, what we look for, why we get the tape measure out, why we might even recommend into a, a change to a design that's already existing. Um, but hopefully these pictures will give you an idea to it. In terms of a shower toilet itself, um, there's considerations for the toilet itself. So a lot of the wall hung toilets that you saw in me picture a moment ago, they were never designed for the healthcare market. So they don't have certain features built into them like um, seat bypass mode. So as you know, we most shower toilets when you sit on them directly, the pressure of your bottom on the seat activates the toilet and it turns on. Obviously, if you're on the shower chair going over the toilet, you've not got the pressure on the seat. So you need to have some sort of bypass mode to it. The majority of shower toilets sold across the world don't have a seat bypass to them, which means they wouldn't work with shower toilets or shower chairs. Um, so that's one of the functions that you should look for. And there's also simple little things to consider. When you sit on the toilet, your bottom is on the seat, it creates a seal, and all the water and all the heat is trapped in there by the skin of your bottom. When you're on a shower chair, you've usually got an inch or two of steel, metal framework, and then an inch or two of seat padding. So you can end up with a gap between three or four inches between the shower chair and the toilet itself. Um, so now you need to think, well, I'm higher up, so I need the water to be stronger. I'm higher up, I need the heat to be warmer because the further it's got to travel up, the more it'll cool down. Uh, you've been in some bathrooms that can be very warm. We've been in some bathrooms that are very cold. Um, so you can imagine the heat from the dryer, which isn't her dryer strength, because that would be too strong for someone's bottom. Um, it's it's got to get up there and it's got to be warm and it's got to be strong enough to get up there. Um, and even positioning of the wash arm. When you sit on a toilet directly, you're in one position. When you're in a shower chair, you're controlled by the shower chair to what position it goes in. So some of the shower toilets you may see on the market, they're not adjustable in power of wash or position of wash or even temperature or the power of the dryer. Um, thankfully ours does, so it covers it all off. Uh, and I think the most important thing from our toilet is that the system is height adjustable. So everything I'm gonna show you with these pictures now and the different measurements I talk about, uh, we achieve because we've got a height adjustable system at the time of install. And I've got a little picture to show you. Um, because often when we're talking about shower chairs working over the toilet, it's important to get the shower chair as close to the ceramic as possible when going over. So this is a, a Freeway T40 Auto. Uh, and Freeway have a terminology called DIM W or Dimension W. And basically it's a, it's a height from the floor to the metal bar. Now you can see two metal bars in this picture and I've got one saying not this metal bar. Um, but if you actually look underneath the metal bar that the seats clamps onto, it's that one. So typically with any freeway auto shower chair, whether it's tilting space, whether it's a T40 auto, you can see here, uh, that gap is 480 mil. So in this instance, we would always say install our toilet with a seat height of 465 mil. So we've got a 15 mil gap in the toilet and the chair when it goes over. So we're still very close. We're not going to have water escaping left, right. We're not going to have heat evaporating before it gets to you. Um, but there's just enough play. That 15 millimeter gap is designed to cover off an uneven bathroom floor or the frame even flexing if you've got someone sitting there on who's quite high up on the weight limit. Um, you can take that freeway terminology, DIMW, and use it on any shower chair. And, and kind of a key is whatever height that DIMW is, you want the shower toilet 
for instance, I was being about 15 millimeters less than that. So if you hear me talking about dim W at all through this presentation, that's what I'm referring to. If you ever have a special shower chair made and you're unsure what height to install a toilet at, a, a shower toilet in particular, you would ask, in this case, a freeway rep, what will the dim W be of my special height shower chair? And whatever height they say, you simply need to know to knock 15 millimeters off it. And if you're installing a Gebrick shower toilet, for example, that would skim over it perfectly. Okay. Um, so this is gonna go through a couple of soil pipe scenarios for you. Um, the ones that you may have seen in the bathroom where it's just coming straight out the wall and you think, oh, that's brilliant, it's dead easy. Just chuck the toilet in. You'll see ones where soil pipes are coming out sideways. You can see it in this picture here, uh, the black pipe sticking out sideways. Sometimes you'll see the soil pipe coming out the bathroom floor. And again, you think, oh, that's perfect. I can have the toilet at any height I want to. Uh, and in some really old houses, you may even see the soil pipe coming out the bathroom floor away from the wall. Um, so I'm gonna cover off a couple of scenarios, give you a couple of pictures to show you uh, before and afters. Okay, and, and the reason I do this is because as you can clearly see here, no bathrooms are the same. We've got a, a very narrow bathroom here at the back with soil pipe going out in the wall. We've got one here where the toilet is very close to the wall and actually quite close to a radiator. Um, you've got one down at the bottom where all the boxing's in place. You've got one in the middle of the room, which is perfect for some, but not very good for someone if you need a grab rail on the wall. Uh, and as you can see on this one, the side exit soil pipe. Um, and one of the things I always stress to people is our toilet comes as standard with no lid. So it comes with a toilet seat, obviously but no lid. Uh, the reason for no lid as standard, it's our only optional extra we sell, by not having a lid as standard, it's one less thing to get in the way. One of the most aggravating things of shower chairs going over toilets with lids on and seats up is that they get in the way and stop the chair from going all the way backwards. So as standard, we don't put one on. Um, and these pictures were just randomly taken out my iPad, but out of them all, you'll notice there's only one that the lid was actually down. And in some cases, top right, at top center, sorry, in bottom right. Often occupational therapists have put something on the toilet that means he can't close the toilet lid anyway. Um, so we don't put one on a standard. If a family specifically wanted one, then yes, it can have one. It's the only optional extra we sell with a toilet. Um, so first scenario, and this is one that everyone thinks is the best one in the world, and nine times out of 10, it is the best one in the world, is a soil pipe coming out the floor. Um, and the reason I say it's the best one in the world is because it doesn't matter what height you want the toilet now or in the future, a soil pipe sticking out the floor, especially this day and age with plumbers using what they call the flexi soil pipes, these ones that stretch and expand. Um, you could install the toilet in this position at one height and within an hour's work, six months, two years, five years down the line, increase or decrease the height again without any major work because it's a simple case of just stretching the soil pipe because it's coming out the floor. There's really no issues to it. It's really straightforward. Um, there's certain things that we look for when, when you ask us out into the bathroom. So for example, if we're looking at taking the existing toilet out and putting our existing toilet in, or even if you were taking a toilet out to put any other toilet in, all toilets of that many different shapes and designs, the footprints are always different. So if you look at the small picture, you'll notice there's no cut line here. This is one of the first things we always look for. If you look around the back of a toilet and you see a cut line, you know that the floor was fitted around the toilet. If you look around the back and there is no cut line like this one, you know it's been done properly and the flooring was fitted first and then the toilet on top after. Now, what does that mean? Well, it means when you come to take the toilet out to fit our toilet or another toilet, the footprint's going to be different so when we look for this line, it's a little note to ourselves to put a comment in the quote request to add where it's acceptable to do so, an additional patching in work. So we can turn up with an additional piece of vinyl material to suit and patch in around the toilet before they install the new toilet. If you don't do that, you end up with usually a, a crescent shaped gap at the front where the flooring was on the old toilet against the new toilet or a square shape or just it's not waterproof and it's not watertight and you can see the floorboards. So that's the first thing that we always look for is has there been a cut line here? Has the flooring been fitted first? Has it not? If there is a cut line, we can add an additional comment to the installer to quote additionally 
for the flooring to be patched. You, you may find in some councils we say, no, we don't accept patching. We want to replace the entire flooring. Uh, most are quite happy with the patching because of a big difference in cost. Um, on occasions when the soil pipes coming out the floor, we'll actually come across it where it's quite away into the bathroom, away from the wall. Um, and you can think, oh, crikey, how are we going to do that? If it's a wooden floor upstairs, it's quite a quick fix. You can take up the floorboards and move the, the soil pipe to the back wall. If you're in a bungalow downstairs or an extension downstairs and it's a concrete floor, uh, typically it would involve digging out the whole bathroom floor, redoing the entire structure of the plumbing supply into the bathroom uh, and then <laughs> reconcreting the bathroom floor. Thankfully, Gebrit, we, um, because we're globally used for plumbing, we have a little pipe called the S-Bend 110. And what we do with this is we can just dig out a screen, uh, 110, 120 mil channel in the floor, place the soil pipe in it and then screed it back. And as you can see in this picture where it's on top, it actually moves the soil pipe back towards the wall and then up into the correct position. This little pipe takes two or three hours work to do, digging out the channel, moving it to the place, sinking it and screening it. The old fashioned way of digging it out and completely redoing the bathroom floor can be two or three days work. So for the sake of a, a 70 pound pipe, uh, you can save a lot of labor and a lot of cost to it as well. Um, and this then moves it perfectly into the position where we want it. And then we can set the height based on it. We've also used this in some cases when we want to move the toilet diagonally. So in certain bathroom layouts, if you wanted the toilet going from corner to corner, so we can even use this to move it across, depending on how far away it is. Um, but it's a real time saver that helps us out. And it also means then that you don't have to do additional boxing out to bring the toilet forward to sit in line with it where it currently is. And the kind of an outcome of getting the soil pipe out the floor correct is that you have no obstructions at the back. So whether it's now or whether it's in the future, there's there's nothing that's going to stop any type of shower chair from going over the toilet because what you end up with with the soil pipe coming out the floor is a very clean back. There's nothing sticking out sideways. There's no obstructions for the frame of a tilting space. There's no obstructions for a shower chair self-propel with the wheels coming out the back. So yeah, my, my favourite is soil pipe for the floor. It's usually the best one to work with unless you say, I need it moving there. And if it's a concrete floor, there's a lot of digging out to be done. Um, if it's a wooden floor, it's very straightforward. But if the toilet's staying in position, it's it's the most perfect of all soil pipes to work with. Um, and then scenario two, and there's an interesting picture coming up in a minute on this one to show you. But scenario two is um, the side exit soil pipe. Um, again, it can be seen as one of the easiest ones to work with because a side exit soil pipe, you can cut it or extend it to the length you want to put the toilet exactly in the position on that wall where you want it, whether it's close to the wall for someone to hold on to, have a transfer, whether it's in the middle of a room so curers can get around both sides. Um, it really doesn't matter. Even on height adjustment, it's great because the pipe can bend upwards or downwards to come out the side. Um, it works perfectly with transit type shower chairs, but the downside is it doesn't work with self-propel and it doesn't work with uh, tilting space show chairs simply because the big wheels of a self-propel would hit it and the frame of the uh, attendant, sorry, the tilting space show chair, because it's longer than a normal show chair, would also hit it. And it, what happens is when, as it hits it, it stops it from going fully back over the toilet. Um, so again, it's not that you can't overcome these issues. In most cases, this will work fine unless you know for sure it's going to be a tilting space show chair in the future. Now, there is one little exception to this, and this was a great little find I came across uh, last year at one of Stuart's events uh, in South Wales, at the Autoc event in South Wales. Last year, Invercur launched a show chair called the Ocean VIP Ergo. Now, they do have an Ocean VIP already. So the Ocean VIP Ergo is a tilting space show chair. And out of all the show chairs, tilting space show chairs I've tested so far or seen, it's the only one that I can find that actually works over a shower toilet that's got side exit soil pipe. So if you did come across a shower toilet, particularly ours, that had a side exit soil pipe, you think, oh, crikey, I'm going to have to get it uninstalled to do all this work to put it back in to make it work. 
do speak to Invercur about the Ocean VIP Ergo. Make sure you say Ergo. Um, and it's the only one so far that I've found that's a tilting space shower chair that will work with side exit soil pipe. It could save you a lot of time and a lot of work. Um, and I think the VIP Ergo from Invercur, I think it's around about 800 to 1,000 pounds uh, selling price. Um, so to give you an example, this photograph here, this has been done correctly. This was going to be used with a, a tilting space shower chair. Now the original toilet sat back here against this wall, not brought forward like you can see as it was installed. And on the original plans that were showing, the toilet was going to be installed against this back wall where you can see the jars and um, glass jars on the wall. This has been an addition that was in built and installed before the toilet was fitted in. The original toilet touched the back wall, so it was resting on it just like the basin is in the corner. The issue you've got, you can see this soil stack coming down the side. If this toilet had been that six to eight inches further back where the original toilet was, if you'd have brought a shower chair over it, you'd have found either the push handles, or in this case, the tilting space shower chair, the frame, the back wheels would have hit this wall with a soil stack on it long before the shower chair was all the way back. So thankfully, uh, as most OTs do when they ask us out for visits, we have a chat about it. We went into the bathroom and straight away I saw this and said, look, if you're going for a tilting space shower chair, because the soil pipe's coming down here and through the side, we need to box out this a little additional bit. So you can see this, it's just a little timber studded frame wall that they've built to the width or just a little bit bigger than the width to make it look nice to the width and height of the cistern and then install the toilet against it. So what you've done is bring it forward uh, anywhere between 75 to 100 mil, roughly the thickness of the soil pipe and the tiling that it takes to, and then the toilet gets fitted. So the positive to this is now the shower toilet and the shower chair will work together. The tilting space can go right over it's flush into the place it will need to be. You're not going to get any leakages or damages, uh, as you'll see in a minute, someone weaning on the bathroom floor. The negative side to it, but you've always got to remember, is that we've just added a, anywhere between 75 to 100 mil in projection to the toilet. In this case, it was no problem at all. It was recessed anyway. We were just leveling it off. Um, but in some bathrooms, when it's side exit soil pipe and it's tilting space, and you want the shower toilet, you've got to look at blanking off that soil pipe and building the false wall. So you can actually end up making the bathroom a little bit smaller. Um, and at that point, you've then got to assess if a bathroom's too small, can we have a tilting space? Or is it worth looking at just a normal upright with something like a, a normal upright shower chair with something like a universal body strap, just to help them keep sat upright. Um, but in this one, as you can see, they did the boxing in it brought the toilet forward in front of the side exit soil pipe. It allowed the shower chair to go over it fully and there was still enough room when the chair was over the toilet for the bathroom door to be closed as well. Um, and in some cases we can actually save room. This was an, an old toilet from a long time ago where uh, side exit soil pipes in the toilet wasn't, uh, wasn't doable. On ours, on the toilet, we can have pretty much any configuration of soil pipe but what happened in time with this one, uh, the toilet wasn't able to take a side exit soil pipe. So we had to box in round the back, which you can just see in this photograph here. The downside to that was, as I say, it brings the projection of a toilet further forward. So if you look at the shadow line across the bottom, you'll notice it's past this, this box, this section, which is also the door entry. So in the early days, it was fine because the client could walk into the bathroom Later on, when mobility was a bit more of a challenge, this here projection was in front of the door, which caused a bit of an obstacle. So to give you an idea of what it looks like with or without boxing in, that's a projection with boxing in. And this was a projection afterwards. So because the toilet allows for side exit soil pipe quite easily, we could get rid of all the existing boxing in, sit the toilet flush back against the wall. So it looks neater and cleaner but also now you can see the difference with the shadow line. We're actually in line with the door entry frame. So we're not becoming an obstacle at all. Um, and it's just, a, if anything, that's a highlight to show you how we can get it in situations. Um, and I promised you a bad example of a side exit soil pipe. 
So obviously this is an existing toilet. And um, from what I got told, the shower chair got sent from equipment law stores in a rush, in an emergency to help out. Um, what hadn't been considered, you can just see it through the wheels, is a soil pipe that then bends off. Uh, if you were stood facing toilet, it bends off to the right. So now, if you do look carefully, you can see the ceramic of the toilet and you can see where the shower chair hits. So the shower chair has gone over to a point when the big wheels hit the soil pipe, which stops it going all the way back. Uh, this gentleman in particular, he, he could use it. It was a, an emergency thing to help out. It was better than nothing. But the, the downsides of it were, yes, it didn't go all the way back. So when he was doing his number twos, Unfortunately, it wasn't dropping straight in the ball. It was clinging onto the, the shape, the curvature of the ceramic at the front. So just flushing it wasn't enough. Someone had to brush it away every single time. Um, and also uh, when, he, when he was urinating, he had to have someone stand in front of him holding a bottle to urinate because if he didn't, he'd just urinate on the floor rather than in the toilet. So that's kind of a, a worst case of example of what you come across trying to put a self-propel over a side exit soil pipe. And that's why during any of the assessments, we're always asking, you know, are you thinking of a shower chair? Yes. Is it a tendon type with the small wheels all round? Or is it the self-propel with the big wheels? If it's a tendon, doesn't matter about side exit soil pipe. If it's self-propel like this one, then yeah, we've got to look at bringing the toilet forward, hiding the soil pipe somewhere or another, and making sure we don't end up with this scenario that you've got here. Um, now, this is a picture of a positive outcome. So if you like, this is what it can look like. This is a lovely bathroom. I love the fact we made the toilet look so nice, adding the extra flowers and little ornaments around. But if you look in this, you can see straight away along the back wall is this extra little box in the shelf. This is where the soil pipe's running. And then they wanted to make a feature of the boxing in. So we've made it a little bit bigger and a little bit wider than the cistern itself and then fitted the toilet to it. This one is actually installed for a gentleman with motor neurons. Um, at the time, this was 12 months ago now, um, at the time he was still ambulant with a little bit of help and support, hence the drop down rails. Um, but as you know, with, with motor neurons, you can progress through the stages quite quickly. So we know at some point this, this toilet's going to be used with a shower chair. Whether the family and the OT go straight in for a tilting space from day one, or whether it's a progression from sitting directly to sitting in a, a normal upright shower chair to eventually end up in a tilting space. That'll be decided in the future. In terms of a toilet, the toilet's now set at the height. It's got no obstacles at the back whatsoever. Um, it, it's pretty, pretty much set now to go through the whole process and the changes with the family. So that's what we mean when you see it on our quote saying boxing gin or bulkhead. Um, it's pretty much the terminology we go through. And again, just going back, the beauty of a side exit soil pipe because you can just cut it to the length you need, it can literally be installed in any part of the bathroom you want where that soil pipe is. Um, and here's a few more examples. This was a, a little cloak room under the stairs and the, bath, the soil pipe was brought in the house, runs along the back wall and then cuts in the side of a toilet. Looks nice and neat. Uh, again, this, this one was a side exit soil pipe. You can just see across the top of the picture, they've built this full height wall all the way across. No obstacles now, so the show chair works perfectly. Um, and just to show off a little bit, I guess, the height adjustment in our toilet is from 430 mil to 565 mil seat height. So this one here, you can tell with the amount of skirt on show, it's on its high seat height setting. In fact, it's nearly level with a roll top bath, um, but it's still hard side exit soil pipe because we can bend it through. Um, and I guess the third one is one that you probably all see most commonly. I, I guess it depends on which part of your country you live. Um, I tend to see a lot over in, in, in North Wales, South Wales have soil pipes in the floor. England tend to go for soil pipes out the wall, but there's no right or wrong. Um, typically, when everyone sees a soil pipe out the wall, they think, perfect, dead easy. Uh, we can work anything we want to with that. And as a rule, you generally can. Um, the only time a soil pipe out the wall becomes a, a, a little bit of pain in the bottom is if you want to move the toilet. Um, because sometimes it means knocking holes in brick walls, and I'll show you that in a second. So I just wanted to give you a, a bad example. And, it, and this is perfect. You can all see how close to the toilet, the toilet is to the wall. Um, 
if you even attempted to get a show at your Denver now in that position with that toilet, never mind a show of toilet, you would probably just about get it over. But what there's not enough room there for you to do is bring the show chair back. Because if you think of a shopping trolley, when do you push it one way, the casters flick one way and roll. And then when you pull it in other directions, the casters flick round and roll again. So if you were to put a show chair over that toilet in that position, it probably would go over, just might scratch the tiles doing so. But when you come to bring it back, you wouldn't because the casters won't be able to turn. And with the weight of the person in and the, the caster angle it would now get when you try to pull it, it just won't go. The only way in that scenario you would get the person off the toilet is probably to lift them, hoist them off the toilet, and then get the shower chair and lift it high up vertically, and then in a way. So this is a, a really good picture of a bad example of a shower toilet being fitted too close to the wall. Um, you could also imagine this one is quite burr, it's okay, but often there's a radiator in this position. So that would really rule out any sort of equipment going down the side of it. And, and this lady in particular, um, with, with her heavily swollen legs, she was actually squashing herself against the wall to sit herself on the toilet because it was that close. Um, and bear in mind, these are tiles, they're not always warm. So it was quite cold tiles on a bare naked flesh while she sat on the toilet, squashed against it. So as she said, it was, it was just a horrible experience for her every time going to the toilet. And one or two people had been out plumbers to try and fix this by moving the toilet across. But instead of doing it the proper way, they were simply trying to put an angle here on the soil pipe that you can see in the little picture that the toilet wasn't designed for. So every time we tried to move it for a little bit, because they weren't doing it properly, they just caused problems with the flushing and blockages. And in the end, she was that fed up with it, she resorted to having the toilet moved back to where it should be. So that's kind of a a nice picture to lead you on to why sometimes you'll hear us say you need to move the soil pipe. So the downside of moving a soil pipe that's coming out the wall, unless you're prepared to build a new false wall in the house, is usually you're not causing the wall on the outside. So this is a, a typical photograph of a soil pipe, your vent pipe running up the back of your house, sometimes at the side of houses, and this is a soil pipe going into the house. So let's say, for example, we needed to move the toilet you've just seen six inches to give a, a soil pipe centre of, say, 500 mil, which is pretty much the industry norm, to make sure we've got room down both sides of a toilet against an adjacent wall. We would have to cut this off, redrill a hole in the brickwork, say, here, and then extend this across, feed it back into the building, and you've moved the soil pipe. So again, it's not something you can't do, but when you see a toilet back close to a bathroom wall and you say, yeah, and we're going to put a, a, a T40 auto over it, Simon. If you see me go, mm, there's a little bit more work to be done. This is exactly why we need the gap from the edge of a toilet to the adjacent wall to be at least 20, 25 centimetres, 250 mil. Um, or ideally, the measurement is from the adjacent wall to the centre of a toilet, 500 mil. And when the soil pipe comes out the wall, very often the only way you can do it is by chopping this off shortening the length or increasing the length to move it to the right place you want. Um, there is some benefits when you're doing that because whilst you're at it, you can also increase the height of it. So if you had a very tall gentleman, say six foot, six foot five, and you said, I need a seat height of five, 550 mil, whilst it's being moved, this could actually be raised up the building to come out the bathroom wall higher up so the toilet can fit to it. Um, these sound quite extreme, but sometimes if they're not done at the start, often it's an unsightly error that you have to make later because obviously on the inside, you've still left with the hole that needs bricking up and replastering and covering. So if it's done at the time of say an adaptation and moving it across, it can be replastered, reskin, retiled, nothing worse than drilling through people's tiles and, and leave them with a hole. But yeah, typically a soil pipe out the wall is great to work with unless you need to move it. Um, and, and here's just some, some more pretty pictures as you can see, because it's a soil pipe out the wall, it's a very open area at the back. There's nothing in the way. We can install the toilet to whatever seat height we want. In this case, the middle picture, 465 mil, so the T80 uh, shower chair will wheel over it nicely. Um, and you know, it just leaves you with a nice, I'm looking at the picture on the left, with a nice 
looking bathroom experience. There's no unsightly holes to the side. Everything's been tiled up and it can sit nicely with some furniture if it wants to. So they were kind of the three common scenarios we come across and the three main things that we're looking for, especially when it's equipment that's going to be over the toilet. And the idea of taking note of it at the start so it doesn't have to be an issue or a concern later on, which then ties nicely with the equipment compatibility report because the idea of a toilet when we were designing it, um, we've always had the Mira Classic, the, the ceramic part, the wash dry part of it, we launched that in 2015. What we did was develop a frame and a system, this was my input into the side of a toilet, was to make sure that we had a frame that could accommodate any existing bathroom or a new bathroom and be quickly adjustable and adaptable for any future changes as we go along it. So the equipment compatibility report is about 40, 50 pages long now. Um, I broke it down into sections because it's getting bigger and bigger by the year. So the first section is just normal upright type shower chairs, your T40s, your sonic commodes, um, your Invercure type shower chairs. The second section is based on tilting space, so a, a whole range of tilting space shower chairs that I've tested. There's a section on bariatrics, which is a webinar I'm doing next Thursday talking about weight limits of toilets, weight limits of people, dynamic seating, the impact of someone dropping heavily on it. Um, we've got a section on paediatrics. So yes, it's 40, 50 pages long, but if there's a certain section you want to get to, you can just flick to it very quickly. Uh, I've had it going now for about six years. And over the years, OTs tell me they call it the shower chair Bible um, because it's got all different manufacturers in one place. So if you're like, well, what shower chair does what? What does this? And what weight limits I've tended to put it in the report for you? Um, and I'm nearly done now because we'll take the screen off and do any questions and answers. But just to let you aware of a toilet, the toilet, as I earlier mentioned, the only thing we sell as an optional extra is the lid. That's because everything comes as standard. So whether it's a user remote control that the friends and family love to press all the buttons, whether it's a very simple touch panel that you just touch and it'll make the toilet flush, wash, dry, um, whether it's the app that you want to download on your mobile phone, uh, to the five-year warranty, to all the profile settings, everything's as standard. You can see from the photograph, by not having a lid, we've got this lovely open space that doesn't cause an obstruction for any shower chair going over it. Okay. Um, just some extra features. You can all read it on the left by now, probably. It has a lady wash. That's a standard function, but it's a separate wash. So this toilet is, if you like, universal for both men and women to use the wash dry function. The height adjustment, as I touched on earlier, 43 centimetres, so normal toilet seat height. And it can be adjusted by the millimetre to whatever height you want from 43 centimetres right up to uh, 56 and a half centimetres. Um, and... And just, I think the world's slowly converting now, but there's never ever been such thing as servicing on a shower toilet. There's things you can clean. Um, on our toilet, it's got its own little self-servicing function. In other words, we show the families how they can clean and maintain it as and when they want. It's a two minute task. Um, we've actually started uploading some videos up onto our YouTube channel. So if you get a little bit bored later, you want to watch the, the demonstration video that we've been showing to families to help them who are shielding. It's the one that's 25 minutes long. Just simply type into YouTube, AquaClean Care Team, um, and you'll see all sorts of videos on there. This one here is literally me stood in the bathroom at work and going, hi, I'm Simon. I'm going to show you how to clean, or as some say service, your toilet. Uh, and you'll notice it's a minute, two minute video because that's all it takes to do. And we advise people to do it as and when they want. To do it once a year is kind of unhygienic. So to be able to do it as and when required, if someone's had an accident, um, you know, at mine at home, I do mine about every four week. Uh, that's just me personally. My two daughters use the toilet as long as I do, as well as I do. They use a lady wash. I want it to be clean and hygienic. Uh, so I do the cleaning every couple of weeks. And for any technical officers or grants officers or anyone who's just genuinely interested in the installation process, uh, there's about five or six videos about installing the toilet as well. So have a look through it. Uh, the demonstration video, now it's on about three and a half thousand views, been really well received. It genuinely is me sat in my living room demonstrating the toilet in full. So you hear the dryer, you can hear the sound of the wash being increased or decreased. You get to see all the remote controls being used, the simple touch panel. Um, I even show people how to clean it on that video as well. 
and initial contact just for the sake of today rather than putting lots of phone numbers on um, i'll leave that up for a second or two if you want to write it down but we'll send it you later on anyway so i'm simon there's a, a team of six of us now covering the uk um, daily taking our toilets out doing the demonstrations but we don't only just do the demonstration before the visit so um, a modern shower toilet these days you pretty much the installer installs it turns it on the toilet tests itself just like you do your mobile phone does when you turn your mobile phone on and then we're in five minutes ready to go you can get on it and have your first wash so that's kind of what we ask everyone who's getting our toilet to do the day it works the day it's installed is the day it works so get on it have a go we get told by either the occupational therapist by the technical officer or even by the installer that they've fitted it and then we give the family a call and we arrange to go back out and see them usually about two weeks down the line because that two weeks gives them a chance to sit on it, experience the wash, experience the dry, understand if they wish the water was warmer or cooler or stronger or gentler, uh, the position of it. And it just gives them a chance to familiarise themselves with what they want for a wash. So when we do go out and see them, they pretty much tell us and we can help them to set the wash up to exactly how they want it. And whilst we do, we're really also talking through how to clean it, how to look after it, um, and if there's any other family members who want to get involved, we can help them set their own little personal pre-wash settings as well. So I need to stop sharing. I think we've got, yeah, about 10, 15 minutes worth of questions. Stuart, are we all back in the room? <laughs>